But here we go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Veterans in Crisis podcast. Today, we have Jackie Nixon, who is the Community Public Health Practitioner for Southern City Council. Uh, we've asked Jackie here today because it's Mental Health Awareness Week, and I thought it would be nice to hear from someone who works with mental health. Hiya, Jackie. Hi, hi. You all right? Ah, good. How's things going? I don't work in mental health no more. Well, you're mental, though. So I am mental. You'd be probably the mental. best person to speak about it. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 send, you send me all the mental health things, so I do. You, I you're, do. You're, you're probably the best person to tell people what's happening, what sort of resources are out there for them, what kind of things they can tap into. Do you not think? Yeah. So I have got we... a lot. I've got a lot of knowledge on mental health because I did lead on it a few years ago, but I lead on isolation and loneliness now, which is mental health as well, really. Yeah, well, I mean, isolation and loneliness is, is something yeah. we talk about because of what's happening now. Yeah. So do you want to start off with, because obviously your accent isn't from Sunderland, and I know you're from Manchester, so do you want to start off a little bit about your life and how you ended up in Sunderland? Um, I've been if, in if Sunderland. If there's anything now. you don't want to talk about, just say I'm not talking about it. <laughs> Shut up. So I've been in Sunderland now 32 years. Um, I came when I was about 19, um, met my husband and then had a daughter quite young and then decided that I really wanted her to go on to university. So I did an access course to uh, university. Then I did a degree in community and youth work and that's why I'm so good at community development because I'm all about the people. And then I got a job in the voluntary sector and then I got a job in the NHS they paid for me to do a master's in public health um, and then when the government changed seven years ago we were all moved into the local authority I didn't want to leave the NHS but I think that public health is better in the local authority because we can influence so much more for the local people and that's what my background is about um, engagement and community development and really helping people to make decisions about themselves it's a, a, a really good community spirit in Sunderland, isn't it? Yeah, I love Sunderland. I love the way when you're walking down the street, people say, aye, aye. You don't <laughs> get that in Manchester. No, you wouldn't, would I, you? I, no, and I love the passion of the football as well. Because um, I'm not into football, really, but I do love the passion of the football. You know, my husband and my daughter love the football, but um, I just go along with it, really. I just like the crowd, I think. <laughs> yeah, well, you couldn't really support Man United, could you? Because you're not from London. <laughs> I'm from Salford. I'm from Salford, where Manchester United is. It's not in Manchester. It's in Salford. Yeah, it's a, a city in itself, and it's Salford. I did I say I know, and I haven't rehearsed this because you're coming on. I just know yeah. I know my cities. So, um, <laughs> I mean, we we sort of met God about about nine or ten years ago, I think, eight nine yeah. ten years ago, when I worked for a uh, homeless charity in Sunderland. Wasn't yeah. a, it wasn't a Sunderland-based one, it was a Gateshead-based one. Not a very good charity, pretty shit to be quite honest. Uh, but because of that, I sort of volunteered to come to your meetings uh, yeah. once a month. I can't remember what they were called. At first, it was a different name to what they changed to. They were called the Health and Wellbeing Engagement Network. It was, it was originally called the Sunderland Wellbeing Network. And then when they moved us into a different department in the council, they changed to the Health and Wellbeing Engagement Network. And now it's gone back to the Sunderland Wellbeing Network, which it should be. Mm. It, it, it's a great, great place to go and meet people for um, to make connections and stuff, isn't it? Yeah, and a lot of a lot of organisations have said without coming to that network, they would never have made the connections across the city. So no, they I, really, I, I do, would not. So they really do value it, but it's not just for um, organisations for anybody that lives in the city. It's, an, it's a network, it's not a formal meeting, so there's no, if you don't come, we're not going to say you can't come back, because it's a network and people can just dip in and out when they want. Uh, there's a lot of good things come out of it, isn't there? There I mean, is, yeah. Uh, you did a, an isolation, uh, a study for the uni, do you want to talk about I that? Did, I did a piece of research on isolation and loneliness, and it was at Sunderland University, but we recruited, well I recruited 20 local people to be trained as community researchers. So they got the training from the university and they also got a certificate in community research from doing that piece of research. They also got their name put into um, journals. So we've had the, the um, 
the work published in free journals. Um, and then what we've done with as a network, we've developed a citywide action plan to implement the action from the research. Because it's all right doing research, but you need action as well. So we had the evidence from the research that was the evidence base to then get some funding to actually implement it. And that's what we've done. And, and is that made a difference? I think it is. Um, our last connectedness event that we had, to, of course, we don't call them isolate, isolation and loneliness events because no one would come. We call, them, <laughs> <laughs> we call them connectedness events. And the last one we had was in um, in the coal fields, and it was a great success. We had people from all and the coal fields, you know, yourself, it's all really spread out. We had people from all over the area come to the event and make connections and it's really for local people so we had in that event we had a group of um, five-year-olds from a local nursery in Horton we had a group of older men from Chiny Road we had a group of residents from um, Lower Mosley we had all the services there you know signposting and telling them what they had but it was about making the connections of local people what was happening in their areas and it was a really great success our next one was due in April but you know because of Covid yeah. we've had to postpone it but that next one's going to be in Washington and then after that I think the next area we've got after that is the West and then we've got a, uh, the funding for a big citywide one uh, which is, we've, we've budgeted to have it at the Stadium of Lights so that everybody that's been to walk because I know that yourselves participated in the one in the north that we had yeah. um, and we're going to invite everybody to the big event um, but with the funding as well we've also um, developed a training package for about three hours where people get trained um, on being a community connector and we me, you you know we're already connectors but it's just about people knowing that some people need to be connected so it's all right gives them all this information but not everybody not everybody's as well at connecting so the connectors will help people to connect in the community whether it be their neighbor you know or somebody who they know in their neighborhood well, do you want to sort that package out for our volunteers then? Well, yeah, your volunteers will be actually be able to go on that training. We've got the money to run five workshops, one in each of the five areas of the city, and that's ready to go as soon as we can get back to doing face-to-face. -face. Oh, great, because we've got, obviously, took more volunteers on now, and we're starting a different package with, uh, like, Safeguard and uh, things like our mental health awareness, different courses to that, Mum. Do... Um, is the health champion still running? It, it's still running, but it's um, it's postponed for the moment until we can do face to face. But it'd be good. The health champions program would be really good for the volunteers as well because mm. it's free. Well, that, this is, that's what started me off in yeah. this sort of journey of this uh, of where I am now. It, the, the health champions was the first courses I done. Yeah, I do think they are. I mean, I've done them. I've done them twice because I I did a review on the on the uh, program. Uh, no, because you failed the first ones. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I, did, I did a review on them because I thought that we needed to make it more. Um, well, I went to I went to a, um, a training event and the venue was really cold, and I don't think that we should be asking people to go to training and then the venue be cold. So I was reviewing it and the content of the of the courses as well. So I did, I did some recommendations. So I think it'll come back bigger and better, really. Mm. Well, it did, did be the world of good. And I always recommend it to uh, the clients and the uh, uh, volunteers to do it as well. Like, so any paid member of staff that I have, they'll all be doing them as well. But when I was, you know, I was in public health and now I've gone into the community resilience team. I'm still very much public health. I've just moved into a different department in the council. And that's because I feel like if I'm in the community resilience service, with the neighbourhood teams, I can really get to the ground as where I want to be. You know, I want to be working with communities. I want to be able to influence them. But I also want to be able to influence some of the leaders of the council to really know what's going on on the ground. And that's why I'm so pleased where I am now. So when I moved out of the public health team into the community resilience team, I still brought a lot of me work with me. So I brought with me this wellbeing network. I brought with me, I'm still leading on isolation and loneliness. I'm still leading on, um, on, I'm now leading on Crowdfund Sunderland, which Crowdfund Sunderland is brilliant. It's about raising money for what communities want. And I the way I'm we're going to, we're going uh, to try that, I think, in, uh, in the Christmas time, I think it is. Yeah, John said that, yeah. Because we need the money for the building. 
yeah and and the building's a really good um a good example of crowdfund yeah. we've just we're putting a call out um next week for um food banks across the city so we're going to do a big campaign to raise money for food but not just for food because we want to try and tackle poverty we don't want to just give people food all the time we want to get to the underlying causes of why people are in food poverty so a good service is where people come along you support them you help them through the other end and then they go out the other door and then you can bring more people in the other in the in the beginning yeah. you know you know yourself you know you don't want you don't want to create um, a dependency on people where they need you all the time. You want to be able to move them on so that they can then, I mean, I'm not saying that they don't have to be involved with the service anymore, but they can either volunteer or they can actually fundraise. And then these are the things that we need to really promote. So that's what we're doing with this new um, food bank um, campaign that we're going to be starting next week. Is that, is that going to be a uh, campaign and a bit like online? Yeah, it's going to be a crowdfund. Um, we're doing it internally at the moment, so um, to get all the council workers on board, and then after that, it will be going outside to the public. We do we do our own food parcels from here. We call them like a Russian replen, because that's a military term. Uh, and then everyone can have. And then once they've had one, if they come back for another one, then we start to do a kind of a sort of in depth in depth budget with them to see why. You know, why do you need... It's not about giving people food. It's, there must be a reason why they can't afford food. They might, be on the, the right they might be on the right benefits, you know? Yeah, and that's the right thing. But you can link into our welfare service if you think that people really can't manage and they'll support you in the advice that your, your staff might need. Oh, you know, well, because def definitely that. that's, that's what we want to do. We really want to get to the bottom of it because it's like you say, you don't mind giving people food. But we can't just give giving food out all the time. We need to get to the root of what's going on and try and help them that way. I mean, some clients are on quite a lot of uh, benefits, like quite a lot. Um, yeah. And then you just wonder, a working person probably after they pay the bills don't get that much money. So where does the money go? And then you've got to think, yeah. is it, are they getting sort of taxed off someone? Are they getting bullied? Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, it's not prying into their life. It's basically trying to safeguard them. Yeah, definitely. You're right, yeah. I'll just dismiss this. All right, so um, what else has been going on? Why why the lockdown's been on? How have you been well, coping anyway? Well, I've been dying my hair a lot, as you can see. It's gone yeah, dark. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been doing it. I've been training Kevin to be a hairdresser. Oh, it's Kev doing it, is he? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can't wait. My fringe needs cut in. <laughs> I can't wait to see him next time and Vidal so soon. <laughs> He'll be fine. That, that's what he said he is. <laughs> He'll not be going back to work then, is he? Is he opening a salon? I think he's going to open a salon, yeah. <laughs> he can do skin heads. He can dye hair. Yeah, I might be coming for my, like, my daughter don't mind. Yeah, so in terms of what I've been doing, so I'm in the community resilience team and I was only in that team about three weeks before we um, went into lockdown. And what the neighbourhood teams have done, have set up five virtual hubs across the city so that if anybody's in um, crisis or anybody needs any support, I don't know if you've seen the leaflet that we designed and put through all the doors in the city around if you need help or if you need or if you want oh, help. Oh, yes, I did see, yeah. Yeah. So if you need any help, ring us. But if you, if you, um, if you want a support, so we've got um, a bank of over a thousand volunteers at the moment. And I signed up for one, didn't I? Because I always do, because I'm a good Samaritan. It must be the Catholic in me. Um, <laughs> but um, I signed up for one, and within the first week, the because uh, we're working very closely with the CCG and the GP Alliance, and they said that they had um, a couple whose wife is wife. They're in their eighties. The wife was self-isolating. She's got real um, health conditions, and could somebody go around and volunteer to shopping? Well, it was round the corner from my house. So now I'm on my eighth, because I don't work on a Monday, I'm on my eighth week of um, doing their shopping every week. Um, and what I've learned since this experience is that, because they don't do internet banking, so the first week they had money and they said, what are we going to do? Will you be able to accept a check? I didn't even know you could get checks anymore. So he's been giving me a check every week, but then I discovered on my phone that you can actually just scan it with your phone. Yeah. And it goes straight into your bank and then it clears the next day. So there's no 
there's no like taking it to the bank anymore and putting it in you can actually just do it off your phone so like i said it's it's the eighth week because kevin's been doing it because he's been doing our shopping and i've been doing their shopping at the same time so we've been doing that and then you know the last was it the last bank holiday we are in eight was in the bank holiday in eight was it not for you dear no it, no it was the it was the bank holiday before that easter yeah, we got um, we got a call out from work saying that they needed people to be able to work over the bank all the weekend. And I thought, oh, I'll sign for the bank all the Monday. It'll be sweet, half half a day, you know, um, I'll be doing now. But me and Kevin were out, we, we delivered nine food parcels across the city from like Easington Lane, um, right down to Hilton Castle, you know, right across the city. And um, people that were desperate for food. So we went and... Um, delivered them uh you know um so we've been doing that as well oh, you're definitely got, you're definitely going to get into heaven aren't you with your catholicness <laughs> there's no such thing as heaven don't say that but, all my viewers think it is <laughs> <laughs> i believe there's something i'm not i'm not agreeing that it's heaven but i do believe there is something um and then what i've been doing is um, a really good thing that you should do to look after your mental health is the five ways for well-being which you do know what they are so yeah. take take notice so if you're going for a walk take notice of the trees things around you um, and this is not just me saying this this has been actually studied by i think about 650 scientists to say that if you do these five things a day it does improve your health and well-being so we've got take notice we've got be active and i don't mean go to the gym or jump jump up and down even if it's just going for a walk you know that's enough to be active um we've got connect well i'm connecting with you today online although if i'm sick of people saying can i see you and i'm like i'll just speak without me without the video on but everybody wants to see me so i have to because you're in your yeah. pajamas all the time we your hair all over the place <laughs> I know the first couple of weeks I was all done up and then I'm like, oh, I'll just stay in my jammies. I, 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 I know half of you is in your pyjamas now, aren't I? Your bottom half is in your pyjamas. No, no, I've got I know you too, I know you too. I have, I have done that though. I have done that in a meeting, but I'm not doing that today. I've got my slippers on, but I've not you, got my jammies on. You've done that in a meeting in the Civic one when you forgot. <laughs> you just couldn't wear any pyjamas. <laughs> Let's get through these, so be active. And then... <laughs> We've done take notice, we've done connect, give, and that doesn't mean, so for me, doing that um, voluntary role, going shopping for that old man every week, him and his wife, that makes me feel good, so I'm giving something back. Um, I think volunteering or even just giving somebody a smile is enough. Is that the five? Did you, did you count them? Yeah, I wasn't listening, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> So if you do them five things a day, you will improve your emotional health and well-being. And, you know, you do need to look after these. Oh, I forgot the one, keep learning. So that was the final one, keep learning. So, you, you know, learning something every day. So you're learning about my job today and I'm learning about VIX, um, which is really good. Every day is a school, yeah? It is, definitely. Yeah, you, you, you know about VIX already, though, didn't you? You're a, I do. a, a good supporter of VIX. You've done a lot for it, us. If it wasn't so, I've had my Vicks jump on every day. If it wasn't so warm today, I would have had it on. Yeah, you, you, you need to buy a T-shirt. That's what you need to buy <laughs> for the summer. I'll tell yeah. Kev to buy a T-shirt. Spring summer collection's in now. <laughs> Is it? You'll have to get yes. out there online. Get a, get a vest as well. You can get a vest. I'm not wearing a vest. <laughs> <laughs> so what what you got planned for the rest of the day then? Um, I've just got to do some, some more work because I'm, you know, I'm age-friendly league for the city as well so i've been talking to manchester this morning about copying their model <laughs> i'd already copied it but i just checked with them it was okay and i said i'll i'll put a little um an in cap at the top to say you know um i was adapted from manchester i said i don't mind doing that because i am from manchester but it's the strategy that they've got is on a one page and it's really easy to understand and the reason why i wanted to use that one is because I'd have so many conversations about it with people and people just don't get it. So, in, 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 and I will be sharing the, um, the one-line document, like the one-page document, um, mostly at the Wellbeing Network next week when we've got the, um, the network, see what people think. So it's just got three priorities around age-friendly age in the city and that's about making our neighbourhoods um, age-friendly. 
and one's around making all services age friendly and the final one's about tackling ageism because there is especially in times of COVID-19 it's really prominent so people are saying why is that old person out why is there more people in the queue at the supermarket they are allowed to be out you know it's people that are on the shielded list that shouldn't be out doesn't mean that all old people should stay in the house because they're a very diverse population so I'm leading on that for the council as well. Do you think um it's made people a little bit less tolerant of other people of this because you see on social media people take photographs and say look at all these people out but the person take the photographs out as well i think people are being a bit too judgmental um mm. i think they need to understand the circumstances of the individual person you know yes me kept i seen one the other day on social media around two people going in the supermarket. Well, we go in the supermarket together, but we're getting two lots of shopping, mm. you know? So people shouldn't make judgments unless they know the full facts, but there is a lot of that going on on social media. There is. I think the the one problem is, is people have got too much time on their hands. So they're spending time on social media and I've seen a lot of absolute shit, to be quite honest, about what people see about things. But on a positive, there is some good things. People are being a lot more kinder when I go out for a walk. People are a lot more friendlier, smiling, you know. From and two metres away, though, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> two metres away, yeah. But yeah, I was down the beach, you see, it was chocker. Bye. God help the weekend. I'll just be staying in the garden. Aye. Um, But I do think that um, I'm, I'm trying to think of a positive of this, so... I've been working on social isolation and loneliness for the last two years. Now we're in touch with all these old people that are um, that we've never been in touch with before. We need to be able to utilise that to keep them engaged and so that they're not isolated and also in keep engaged all the thousands of volunteers that we've got, you know, and so that there's a lot of people going shopping for people and, you know, bringing their bins out, you know, just simple little things that don't take a lot. I mean, the little old man round the corner said he phones me every Sunday and says, Chat, are you still okay for tomorrow? And I go, I'm absolutely fine. And he'll say, Are you sure? And I go, I'm I'm absolutely you know, I feel like saying to him, It's making me feel good by doing it. We're going yeah. anywhere. We didn't do our shopping in Morrison's, but we we are now because he gets these from there. Oh right. Well, <laughs> well there's Morrison's getting a, they got slagged off so much on social media, it was in the paper. <laughs> <laughs> We're there. Uh, some some woman had said that there was um, no social distancing in Morrison's. I had a bit of a rant about it, and then it actually got put into the one of the Geordie papers in Northern Echo or something like that. Terrible. Then see if you've got an ounce to do better than slag people off, and then people are risking their life serving them food. Exactly. Exactly. My, my family were in Morrison's, you know, and they, they go on there every day. So, what I've noticed from this, uh, or what I've what I've taken from this is um, our clients have really sort of come to the forefront of uh, helping each other. Uh, so without us seeing, they've been phoning each other, keeping in oh, contact, great. and and doing things for each other. Which which when I started Vix was exactly what I wanted, you know, yeah. exactly what I wanted. But th but this is just showing that it's happened. But that's just that's about creating connections and. Instead of just being involved in services, it's about making connections and creating a circle around you so that if you are in a bad way, that you've got someone there to turn to. Mm. Well, a good thing about social media is um, if one of them puts something on like, oh, I'm having a bad deal or whatever, lots of people sort of get in contact, which is good. Yeah. It's great, you know, it's a good it thing. Is. I mean, I, I don't use social media other than um, for work, but I, I, it's... It does, it's good point and it's bad point. It does, it does. I just think it does, especially when, they say, I know it's not very nice to say, but especially when somebody has a death or a bereavement because there's so much love that comes from mm. the people giving them their regards, their condolences. It's unbelievable, you know, people. And it, when people achieve something as well, that's lovely as well because people are so nice saying, well done, you know, congratulations. So I do think it has its positives as well as its negatives. Yeah, it I try not to engage in things that will most be, oh, yeah, I've got an opinion, but I just think, oh, do I really want to say something? Yeah, don't share it. <laughs> Kevin does all the time and he gets loads of crap. Uh, I, I, honestly, even if somebody was slagging us off, I just wouldn't answer. I just, I'm not getting involved in that sort of shit. Too no, busy, not, you know, not, I'm too busy to do stuff. It, no. Yeah.
Right, I'll let you get back off to work then. Thank you so much for uh, coming on. And when we get back to normal, some sort of normality anyway, um, would you come in to the proper studio and do like an hour long one? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no problem. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Jay. Hopefully my hair will be a better colour. <laughs> yeah, get Vidal Kev on it. <laughs> right, cheers, Jason. man. Thanks, bye. Bye.